What's going on guys, Mag Dallin here. Today I would like to continue my review of the Max Roll guide platform that I've been using for my League Star character. Of course I did take quite a few days off and play Lost Ark, so my progression is a little bit slow compared to the average for a lot of the content creators that I see on the platform, but uh, we've been having a lot of fun with the character and yeah, as far as the platform itself goes, I just, I can't say enough good about the way that they've got this set up. They really have put in a lot of work. Obviously, I'm only focusing on one guide, but I took some time and went through a lot of the other ones, and they appear to be all of about the same standard. They're incredibly complete. And uh, just a couple of highlights of the stuff that I've found to be really uh, useful, the skill gem section. I find myself coming back to this pretty frequently. Oh, I forgot this gem, or which one is linked to which one, et cetera, et cetera. It's really fast to just come back and take a look real quick and figure that out. And then probably the... I haven't used the skill tree progression part a whole lot because I've, I haven't been leveling as much in the last few days, but this character progression section is fantastic. So if you look here, they've got... Just a general overview of the gear, very easy, very nice. You can just kind of hover over it and then go try and buy the same thing. But then they've got the actual gearing process broken down into all these milestones where it, it just holds your hand through the whole thing, telling you which item to get in what order, and uh, it gives you crafting options, so on and so forth. There is a path of building section, which I haven't utilized at all, but my understanding is that contains additional information, more in-depth crafting stuff, all of that, so if obviously, if you weren't doing it the way I'm doing it, which is approaching it as though, like, this is my first time using a guide, um, then, you know, normally I would have just grabbed the POB and had that resource available right away. But I wanted to just see what do they have on the website that I can just, you know, utilize right now and follow, and that has worked out really well. There is an embedded guide video at the bottom, which is obviously well done and pretty complete timestamps in the bottom of it or whatever the chapter things are uh, really useful. I have found that I come back to this pretty frequently just to rewatch a little section. So yeah, I, like I said, I can't really say enough good about this, uh, about this platform. This is 100% if a friend of mine was wanting to start the game, this is like a really easy, no hassle. You don't have to worry about it. You can just say, yep, just pick one of the guides off of here. And to my knowledge, there just isn't any other platform that has every guide at the same level of, you know, it's just gonna work. And so that's fantastic for, as I said, to my knowledge, this is a, a first time thing in the game. So really great work on this. So let's jump in game and I'll show you guys my character and then we'll you know, talk about it a little bit, maybe talk about the state of the game a little bit and uh, do some map footage. All right, let's take a look at the character in level 93. I stopped leveling at 92 in terms of caring about XP, and we managed to just grab another level through the process of mapping, so the character runs just fine. We do die pretty frequently, but obviously not enough that it's stopping us from getting the XP when we want it. So our defenses, we've got some armor. If I pop flasks, we've got a fair chunk of it. Resistances are okay. You should have chaos res on your character. Don't be like me. And then in terms of the gear, it's all really cheap. Let's hover over some stuff real quick. This is the wrong chest piece. You probably want the uh, currently very popular Onslaught chest, but I didn't want to pay for it, so this is what I'm running. Rings are divine or less. Amulet is, I, I don't even know when I got this. I, it just had the stats, you know, the dax and int that I needed, so I've just been going with it. Anointed the cheapest damage anoint that I could find. Still running the goal. I did buy this, but it turns out the character just isn't fun enough smooth enough, powerful enough, whatever the way I have it set up to play without the goal, and so this might just be a sunk cost, as it were, but um, you could also just throw some gems in there and swap it out for when you do invitations or whatever, but it is what it is. The axe is really the only thing I spent any currency on. I think I paid three divine for it, and the guy just said oof after we traded, and I said thanks, so I don't know if I overpaid or if he undersold or what happened there, but... It's been working out for me. Obviously the build does call for maces at the final end game form of the build, but I'm not gonna worry about switching to that. You'll get some more stun, maybe a little bit more damage, I think, but I'm fine with axes and the way that I've got it set up, so. Now, in terms of auras, I'm still running Herald of Ash, Determination, War Banner, and Blood and Sand. The build calls for Pride and also for swapping out of Herald of Ash and Blood and Sand, and then you run 
precision and I believe you grab an all amulet with pride on it so that you can try and use reservation to sneak in another aura. Uh, I'm not going to worry about doing any of that. I want the explosions from the Herald. I enjoy that. And Blood and Sand is also kind of fun to play with. It does result in there being a lot of buttons in the build. And so definitely the next build I play, I want something real simple in terms of how many inputs I need to do in a given, you know, two or three minute gameplay space. But uh, for what it is, it works really well. In terms of the Atlas, here's where we're at. I did get all four of my Void Stones. I paid for some carries on those. And we've got some of the favored slots, but not all of them. And you can see our progression there. So not crazy, like I said, we're a little bit behind the curve, but that's fine. We're, we're chugging along just fine. Here is my Atlas Passive Tree. Pretty standard stuff, I guess, now. Uh, full Expedition. And I'm running Harbingers, which I guess I just said it's standard, and, and that's, I guess, not. But I am seeing a lot of people starting to run Harbinger again. I know for me, it really helps with the bubblegum currencies. And every league, I get at least two, if not three, Mirror Shards throughout the course of the league, or at least that's been the case for the last, I think, three leagues. And so if that's still the case, mirror shards are still pretty valuable. So we're going to see how that plays out. And then we're just grabbing the sextant thing and then some altar stuff. And then for now, I've still got a lot of the map nodes, which I'll probably swap out eventually and come up here and grab some more altar stuff and then some quant or whatever. But yeah, that's uh, basically that. And then in terms of scarabs, we are using divination, harbinger, and Reliquary, that seems to be working out just fine. And remember, if you're having trouble with map sustain, the for me at least, the maps that you can Horizon into are really great this week. You can get uh, Waste Pool and Arid Lake, which are both, for me, just fine maps to run. So if you're running low, just grab out all your trash maps, Horizon them all into you know, those two, and then blast those out. And if you've got a few of the favorite slots, you should be able to get a pool going of your map of choice which for me is still going to be Crimson Temple, and then I'm going to also do some Park. And so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so let's jump into a map here. I'll show you how the character runs, and we'll talk a little bit about the game, and then we'll send you on your way. All right, here we are on an Elk and Go Crimson Temple map. I tried to pick a clip that was pretty representative of my average experience while I've been farming. You just run in, pop your Blood Rage, start smashing stuff up, explosions going off, stuff starts feeling pretty good. If you get low, just fire off the life flask and you'll be all right. Obviously, you could stack some more chaos res and spell suppression if you don't want to die as much and you want things to be a little bit smoother. I don't mind, though. In terms of loot, I haven't had any trouble, you know, making four or five divines and then buying some gear and then making some more and whatever. That's been okay. I'm worried that... I'm not going to be able to scale this up to purchase some of the big boy items. And basically, I've decided that for minimum stress and maximum fun, I'm going to view this as a league where I'm being offered the opportunity to level a bunch of characters, try a bunch of leveling uniques, learn about, you know, theory crafting and build making, and focus on the leveling experience and the early to mid mapping experience. And then in subsequent leagues, if they you know, do what I'm hoping they're going to do, which is bring back some of the juice and reevaluate some of the reward structures in the game, I will then have a more fleshed out knowledge base from which to draw that I can then create league start builds and make better content for the channel. That's the way I'm gonna try and spin it. That's my uh, version that's my method for creating the copium that I require and so yeah and then what else can be said yeah to put a bow on all this I think the experiment of can I grab one of these guides and end up with an experience that is fairly similar to how it would feel if I just made the RF character that I'm really comfortable making and that I've played several times and I think the experiment's been a success um, and so, like I said at the beginning of the video, the Max World Guides are fantastic. This character runs just fine. I've been able to do all the stuff that I needed to do. And there are clear and well thought out and you know well written guide portions for the next steps that you would do if you want to take this character further than, than I'm going to take it. And yeah, I guess I'll close out by saying that from here, I want to make a build in maybe three or four days, I'm gonna farm up some currency. 
I need a build that has less buttons. And I want as close to an automated, you know, just auto bomber type style as I can get. So any ideas that you guys have in that department would be much appreciated. I had considered something like Winter Orb or Cast on Crit, but I don't know what the budget is going to be for getting those going. And I think for this league, I want to try and cap out at the you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 divines per build, because I think that's a more reasonable goal for the type of content that I'm probably going to be farming. So yeah, if you guys have thoughts on that, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, I am going to, as I said, farm up some currency, and then hopefully I will be back in a few days with an update on my plans for the next little bit. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for sticking around, and I will see you in the next one. Appreciate you.